Hi everyone, Alexandre Galin from Rhino 3D Tutorials. I got a question from another one of my students and uh, what he wanted to do was basically create a solid with this shape that you see here. Uh, and he did a good job, like if I'm just going to hide this, he did a good job by pro projecting uh, the, the, this curve here. So the cross that you see here, you know, if you go in the properties tab, just make sure that it's a closed curve. Okay, see if it says that it's an open curve, it's going to create problems. So if you have the original curve that happens to be an open curve and you project it into a surface and you get the result in here, well, for sure, you're going to end up with an open curve. And if you start extruding that open curve, you're going to end up with a, a poly surface where you have gaps. OK, so make sure that's the first thing you need to check. It's that it's a nice closed curve. And in this case, it's perfectly fine. So he did a good job of projecting this. And then he tried to extrude the, and he got this result. So his question was, how can I make it a solid? So what I think what he tried to do, I'm not sure, but I think it's solid cap planar holes. Obviously, because it's not planar, as you can see here, you cannot use that function. It's not going to work. I'm going to show you two different approaches on how you can uh, create a solid out of that. So the first one, uh, it's not, it's not the, the, the function that I'm the most crazy about. It's the patch function. Sometimes it works. Other instances, it doesn't work as great. But uh, in this case, it's going to work pretty well. So I'm just going to hide this curve here. And I'm also going to hide the cup. So I'm just going to select all, that, all these surfaces. And I'm just going to focus on this poly surface. So again, like I said, you know, if you're unsure, you can click on Explode. And you can join one by one and make sure that you know it joins properly and that way that means there are no gaps okay this is another uh, little habit of mine i like to do personally and then it's fine you know if it doesn't join uh, you would know immediately uh, that it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to join them so uh, it's for you to find out by using either match surface or redo or check your original curves to make sure that there are no gaps once you've done that uh, so now I want to create a surface here that will cover uh, that poly surface. So I'm just going to go under the surface from three or four corner points, expand my toolbar like so, and go and find the patch function that you see here. So I'm just going to click on patch and I'm going to select one by one, or you can do a box selection as well, you know. So I'm just going to, in this case, do it one by one like that. So I'm selecting all the edges. There you go. And then I'm just going to right click and it's going to show me the patch surface options menu. So I'm going to leave by default the sample point spacing at one, surface U and V spans at 10, and the stiffness at one. I leave it by default. The thing that you need to make sure is that you uncheck adjust tangency and that you have automatic trim checked. You can click on preview to see the result. Here it is. And once you're satisfied with the, the surface, you just click on OK. And now, you know, I'm going to try and join them. So I'm going to click on Join this poly surface with that surface. Right click and it's joined. And I can do the same in the back. So I click on Patch again and one by one, I'm going to. So you see, I've, I can, I've, I've got the option of choosing either the curve or the poly surface edge. Either one, you know, I, I would with the patch function, I would you can, you can try with a curve if you want to, but I would say that the, the best option would try uh, a good habit, you know, would be to use the edges of your poly surface rather than the curve. But, you know, sometimes it works with the curve as well. So it's just a matter in my case to select one by one my edges like so. So again, I should have done a box selection, but, you know, you get the idea. And then I just right click and I'm back in my patch surface options. Adjust tangency is unchecked and automatic trim is checked and I click OK. And now, hopefully, if I click on join, I select this, select this poly surface and that surface. And by selecting it all again, it says here I've got a closed solid poly surface. So basically, I've got a solid. OK, and that works great. But let's assume that the patch function doesn't work great. What other ways are there to do? So I'm going to click on Control Z to undo and go back to the initial state like that. There you go. So I've got my cup and I've got this extruded uh, poly surface. So I'm just going to delete this for now. 
and I'm going to go to the state where it says where it's where we see sorry the projected uh, cross on the cup. All right, so I'm just going to hide this curve as well. Another way of doing it, uh, I'm going to select this outer surface of the cup, and I'm going to select it, the, pro the the projected curve on the cup. All right, and I'm just going to go where it says here select all. I'm going to expand the toolbar, and I'm going to go and find inverse selection. And I'm just going to hide so that I can focus only on these two items. I'm going to select that surface, the outer surface of my cup, and I'm going to do a edit, copy, and then I'm going to do edit, paste. Okay, so if I click on my cup, you can see that I've got two poly surfaces that are superimposed. So I have a duplicate on it. So I'm just going to select one of them and I'm going to hide it as well. So now I end up with only that surface and that uh, projected curve. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on Trim. I'm going to select my curve, Enter, and I'm going to click outside of my cross. So look at my cursor where it is. I'm just going to left click and I'm just going to end up with this surface here. So now I've got this surface and what I can do now is because I've got a surface and I want to create a solid, I go into the solid menu and I have this option where it's called extrude surface and I'm going to do an extrude surface straight all right and now Rhino doesn't know which direction I want to do the extrusion it thinks I want to do it uh, along the Z direction I'm just going to go back to the top viewport I'm going to zoom in a little bit and while you have the extruded function uh, executed you should see in the command line all the options and the very first one is called direction so I'm just going to click on that and you can click anywhere in the top viewport. I'm going to left click here. I'm going to press shift to constrain it along the Y direction of my top viewport. And I'm going to left click again to tell the direction. All right. So now you can see that I'm doing an extrusion. And now if you want to type a specific distance, you just key in on the, on the keyboard, whatever distance you want. But I'm just going to do it eyeballed, you know, and just give it about, about this distance, this thickness. So now if I select my cross, I go back in my properties tab and it should say under type here, closed solid poly surface. So that's another way of doing uh, a solid, okay, out of a non-planar shape. And again, there are multiple different ways, okay. It's with practice, you're going to start learning how to use all these uh, different techniques. But uh, keep in mind that you shouldn't be stuck with one function in particular, that there are multiple, multiple different ways of doing it. And now, finally, uh, I don't know if the intent is to join all of this together, but for example, I can click on join and click on the inner cup, the lip, the outer cup, and I have a solid here. Oh, whoops, sorry. I have a solid here for the cup and the cross is a solid. Now, depending on your tolerances, if I go to tools, options and I'm going to check the, the, the tolerances for joining so I'm going to go where it says uh, let me see it's in uh, units so I click in units in the Rhino options uh, menu and it should say here absolute tolerance so it's a uh, quite a tight tolerance at one thousandth of, a, of an inch I think the distance is so it's a very tight tolerance so that you know that let's see if it works so I'm just going to click on Boolean Union. I'm going to select the first solid, so my cup. Right click. Uh, sorry, let's do it again. Boolean Union, select the cup first, and then I'm going to select the cross, and I'm going to right click. And I end up with a solid, as you can see here. All right. So it worked perfectly well. And there you have it. So keep in mind that there are different ways of doing it, uh, uh, of doing a... a a surface that you can join later on to make a solid. All right. So I hope it was helpful for you guys. And thank you again for your attention. Have a good one.